MC Abdullah shouting at the wall official video. This has been a Patreon request for a minute. I'm exhausted. Last night I couldn't sleep, but when I did, I could hear bombs in my dreams. Nightmare situation. How could they be so evil? Making mortars out of children and innocent people. We expect the bombs not. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold. Let me check these headphones, is it? What is these headphones? Wait, what? Oh, I almost, it made me want to laugh like it's just a kid rap. Then he started saying what he was saying. And it, you did, oh, you're making martyrs out of innocent people? Hold on. And the delivery's so on. It gave me like a little biggie. Like, I know he's young, so he's probably like projecting his voice down lower. But it's okay. It's okay. I feel you. Go ahead. These bars is... D is this him? Like, is this actually this? What the fuck? It's he's good. I'm exhausted. Last night I couldn't sleep, but when I did, I could hear bombs in my dreams. Nightmare situation. How could they be so evil? Making mortars out of children and innocent people. We expect the bombs not knowing where next. Huddle in the corner of my room, trying to protect my little brother. As the building shakes like it's possessed. But nothing stronger than the will of the oppressed. I oh my god. This kid is... Oh my god. This guy is a... As the, like, did you see that, like, story building? And, and, and we could talk about the story, but hold on. Just as, like, like, rapping, you know what I'm saying? Just as for, as a writer, the story building. Okay, you could see it all there. It was vivid. You felt, you felt the pressure. You felt the angst of the moment. The walls are shaking like, 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 um, I forgot what the analogy was. Hold on. The building shakes like it's possessed. It shakes like it's possessed. Bro, shut up. This thing is cold. He shakes like it's possessed, and then it's like, oh, there's nothing stronger than the spirit of the oppressed. I might be messing his words up, but geez. And it's it's I, I feel it. I love I love that hip hop can be used. I don't love that he's in this situation, but I love that hip hop can be used as some kind of outlet for this kind of pain, for this kind of things, for these guys. Kind of, like this is a very noble thing this child is doing i ain't really i guess shouting at the wall this makes sense now but i did not think this was what i was getting into when i came into it my shades on hold on i didn't know what we was doing today folks i thought he was gonna be like freestyle and i thought it might be like funny or something like that but nah that's it this is real this is something that a child this is and, and that's the beauty of art is you can't hide real you know when something happens, horrific things happen. The news go, interview, 35-year-old Ted, 45-year-old lady, a loud black lady, they go to interview, all these things to paint a certain type of narrative. But do they ever go ask a seven-year-old kid who just experienced all those same things with way less coping skills of 35-year-old Ted, do you ever ask him in the news? No, because that would be something that the mass me that the masses could not stomach. Because this would be way too horrific if you dealt with the reality of and, and consequences of the actions that we're all participating in. This would this would be so we had just asked Ted. We had just asked about the robbery and shit. You know what I'm saying? We'll just ha you're not you're not gonna ask the kid who was in it. You know what I'm saying? In my room trying to protect my little brother as the building shakes like it's possessed, but nothing stronger than the will of the oppressed. I bomb back with my lyrics and rhymes, living the times trying to break the Palestinian minds. What's hiding in the clouds hanging over my head? My dad risks his life outside to buy bread. The fourth oh floor my in my twin. God, this nigga said his dad risks his life to go outside and buy bread. Oh my God, man! It's a. I'm definitely not. I'm not somebody who's who will ever. You'll probably catch me talking about um, political situations, especially ones I'm not well informed on. You know, because I don't know. I have no idea what's going on in these situations, and I'd rather be informed than be a part of spewing out an ignorant propaganda. And if I don't know what's going on, all I could speak would be from a place of ignorance, right? 
But let's let's take that away. And remember, we're people. So this is just a kid rapping, right? And let's just the Nick he's scared. Look at how he's putting it together. Look at how he's look at this. It's just like and, and rap be so good when it's real, when it's that shit that's really on your head because you can't, you're not going to be able to hide it anymore. You're going to have to, we, and we're going to have to deal with reality. And so instead of, you know, when you see someone talking about some things, we're not going to, we shouldn't blame the kid. We should blame the circumstances in which this kid was brought up and then let's deal with it. And there's nothing wrong with him articulating what this was like because guy. My dad risks his life outside to buy bread The fourth war in my twelfth year At this stage I'm numb though I have a feel scared There's nothing I can He's been through four wars in twelve years of life Gee, what? He's been, holy Man, and then sometimes I be And sometimes, you know what I'm saying, I'm Nigerian And sometimes when I talk about like I tell people like, man, we don't know how good we got it in this country God damn, motherfuckers be complaining about about some stupid shit, about some stupid shit. When if we put, like if you put the whole world and everything that matters on perspective, relatively, most of us, even if shit seems hard, man, it could be, it could get a lot harder. And it's this is like, and this ain't ain't you shouldn't watch so much trauma and like feel better about yourself, but you should use it. To, to put life in true perspective. You know what I mean? You feel me? In my 12th year at this stage, I'm numb, though I have a feel scared. There's nothing I can do in this no. case to stay safe. I'm brave, even though this house could be. And then just a little, let's get to his rhyme and shit. Just in the case to stay safe. Do you see that little inner rhyme he sprinkles in there? Because the next rhyme is going to be a little further in the pattern. So he just added that in there to just, it's an intention grammar. It's like, okay, ooh, 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 ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Watch that. There's nothing I can do in this case to stay safe. I'm brave. Even though this house could be in my grave. I want freedom for the population. Two million prisoners living in this location. Shouting at the wall, but nothing is ever changing. That's life under an occupation. I want freedom for the population. Two million prisoners living in this location. Shouting at the wall, but nothing is ever changing. That's life under an occupation. You're shouting at the wall and nothing is ever changing. The thing about like good music is like, no matter how specific it is, there will always be a sense of relatability to anybody, right? And that's why like a, a great song, like if you look at like Nas, right? He's talking about Queens. He's talking about a very relative to like the rest of the country, the rest of the world, not that big of a place. It's actually huge actually, but it's like, it's not that big, right? And but somebody in Texas, just off of how well he describes it, not only can enjoy it, but finds a sense of relatability, right? And you're like, okay, so just the idea. That is a very powerful line, shouting at the wall. All, it's the, it's the, this thing is here. And no matter what you do, no matter how mad you get, no matter, you know, you can't really, you feel like you can't do anything about it. That's the shouting at the wall. And I feel like we've all been in a situation where you shouted at a wall, you know what I'm saying? But nothing is ever changing. That's life under an occupation. Mothers mourn, fighting with grief. White sheets covered by his death. Lie on the streets, buildings turn to ash, but my mind is made of steel. So it doesn't take much for me to heal. Won't lose the will to live or lose our minds. My auntie lost her home, so she lost her life, but she is still alive. Oh but my god! Oh! Steel, so it doesn't take much for me to heal. Won't lose the will to live or lose our minds. My auntie lost her home, so she lost her life, but she is still alive. But traumatized by the bombs that flew in and dropped that night. My sister couldn't sleep, tried to stop her cries. I said it was fireworks, I was telling her lies. Where's the compassion? That and that this this is a 12 year old kid turned into a grown ass man and it's it's bro listen to what this kid is telling you it sounds good on a beat and shit but listen to what he's telling you and it's like definitely a heavier reaction than i thought but bro he's 12 years old they're dropping bombs 
the bombs have taken his aunt's house. So it's a reality. You know what I'm saying? It's it's something that he's dealing with it, right? And he they're in such close proximity that he can literally hear them. And his little sister is crying. He's 12 years old. So his little sister has to be between the age of one day old and 11 years old, 12 months and 29 days, right? Anyway, but a child, right? So in that age range. And to comfort her, this 12-year-old who, but remember he told you earlier, he's numb to this at 12. He's been through four of these things. I would I would risk to say that would be the lion's share of his life has been in some kind of war. But he, the, the, the brave young man he is, goes to his sister and says, it's just firecrackers. It's just fireworks. Don't even worry about it. Swallows in the immediate fear, swallows in his fear, swallows in his feelings, and he goes and tells his sister that it's just fireworks. That shit, man. That shit's fuck, man. This is by the bombs that flew in and dropped that night. My sister couldn't sleep, try to stop her cries. I said it was fireworks, I was telling her lies. Where's the compassion? This is heartless. It's like they want us all living in darkness. Cutting off water and electricity for hours. They're knocking towers, but that's not knocking the power that I have in my pen. When I'm writing, I'm unstoppable. The microphone is the only escape possible. Cause that's the way that I can speak my mind. I wonder how does the fighter pilot sleep at night? Knowing he can turn the city upside down all of a sudden. Slaughtering families with the push of a button. I won't it's, that's that's another thing, you know, and I, I I I try to I guess empathize for the fire pilot because judge him, father, for he doesn't know. As pro propaganda is such a thing, right? And I like I said, I don't know who's right or wrong. I and I don't want to say who's right or wrong in this situation, but I just know how certain things work. And so, if I'm fighting a war. All of my troops think you're the bad guys, we're the good guys, and we need to protect home base. And on the other end, they believe we're the good guys, you're the bad guys, and we need to protect home base. But the problem with war, right, is a 12-year-old kid, his aunt and his child, and, and his little sister could die in this. He's, he's dealing with the repercussions. And the problem with wars is wars are created by the top. You know, the, the people running the societies are the ones who are going to have the conflict. We go to war, right? But then the war is fought and, and all of the byproducts of the war are felt by us. Those of us who didn't really have a say in whether this war happened, we're just in this moment. We just live in this country not to say that you don't love the country you're in but let's be honest you're not you didn't get up on tuesday and say all right let's take it to russia you didn't say that it just happened it, you just were there it just happened and that's the problem of it you know what i'm saying but the, the reason i said that i i, I attempt to empathize with the fighter pilot because like hey, you're a piece of shit but it's like he doesn't know he doesn't know he does not know he doesn't he and, and I at least attempt to tell myself that because if you did know and you're still doing it, oh my, but you gotta know, you know what you're doing. Freedom for the population to Cause like matter of fact, no, you do know cause you're going to, uh, you're flying over. This ain't troops you're flying over. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, no, no, no. Million prisoners living in this location, shouting at the wall, but nothing is ever changing. That's life under an occupation. I want freedom for the population. Two million prisoners living in this location. Shouting at the wall, but nothing is ever changing. No. That's life under an occupation. We gotta give that kid a KBD award. MC Abdullah, make sure everybody who watches this reaction hits that thumbs up button so we can do another one. As long as we don't get blocked or nothing, you know? That was a certified vibe check. Here comes another reaction by me right here. Big music video by me right there. Bob, click on it. Show me some love. Watch the video as long as you didn't hit that thumbs up button. You're a host. So stop being out. KBD family, love y'all. Salute. I am gone.